Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com and I've got another box in from China. So what's in this box? I'm really not sure. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open it and let's see what's inside here. Well, after that, it appears to be the G-Tech E180 3D printer from GearBest. So I had talked with them, and uh, this was on back order. They had actually wanted me to do a review of this first, actually, before the, um, uh, you know, JG Aurora. But uh, it, this was on back order. So it just came in. So this is actually pretty cool. I think this is going to be, and I yes, I'm going to say it for those out there who are going to write me, I think this could be the Monoprice Mini Killer, and you're going to see why I say that. So because one of the things, when I do a review of these printers, I, I get to pick the printer. And I pick them for a reason, folks. So I want to be very clear about it. They just don't say, hey, just take this printer and do something with it. Um, we actually talk about what we're going to review or what they would like me to review and what I would like to review and we come to agreement on a printer. Now, uh, just like with the JG Aurora, I'm looking for, uh, you know, entry-level printers. When I say entry-level printers, I'm meaning printers that Joe Average can buy and use without doing a ton of modifications to it just to get it to work right. So when I saw the GTEC E180, um, I found this very interesting. I'll talk about it in a minute, but let's go ahead and get this out of all of its wrappings so we can talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so here we are. We have it out of the box. We have most of the stuff here. Well, basically all the stuff that came in the box laid out to take a look at. So let's take a look at what came in the box uh, first, and then we're going to talk a little bit about why I picked this printer and what I think is so unique about this. So let's start with, it comes with the standard obligatory stuff, um, especially as we look at the sheet here. So we're supposed to have a filament holder kit, a tool kit, spare nozzle, power cord, TF card, micro SD, starter filament, USB cable, and no ballpoint pen. I don't know what the ballpoint pen came from. And it kind of gives a brief breakdown of the uh, unit. Kind of shows how to connect everything. Interesting how the filament stand works. It kind of stands separately of the unit. Um, this does have a color touch screen too, like the JG Aurora. So you kind of notice a theme here. So I'm really looking for printers that are easy to use and kind of work in the same paradigm as one would with a smartphone. So again, so we have all those pieces here. So we have the uh, pieces for the filament holder here. Uh, kind of a long story short, it's it's a stand. It mounts here. The nap piece mounts on top. Nothing spectacular. It comes with some screws. Uh, micro SD card here. I'm sure it's preloaded with stuff. Uh, one gigabyte card. So interesting uh, because the image over here, over there, shows 16 gigabyte, but actually one gigabyte is fine. Uh, spare nozzle. Now you guys might be scratching your head on this one. Keep scratching it. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, tools. So it comes with a little nice little tool packet here. USB cable. So atypical. Got 8,000 of them. And some white filament. Actually quite a bit of it. Um, so, uh, you know, but on an open spool. Or, you know, with no spool. So let's talk about this guy for a little bit. Now, according to the manual, um, if I can open it here. So this says this has a build volume of 130 by 130 by 130 millimeters, which is kind of odd because the length of this bed here is 130. And its depth is far greater than 130, as you can see when I tip it up. So I'm kind of a little bit confused with that. I'll have to take a little bit of a look. Maybe it's just a misprint in the manual. Uh, it does have a color screen, color TFT screen. Uh, probably future videos will open this up, see what's inside. But for right now, I kind of want to stick with this. But... Here's what had me really interested in this thing. And I'm not sure, and I'll probably see if I can't do some overlays, is the uh, nozzle here. The nozzle is actually removable. So no more of that burning your freaking fingers on the nozzle when it becomes plugged. 
And the nozzles become very easy to replace. Now, yeah, I know some of you guys out there are going to say, well, you got to buy their nozzle. Well, of course, that's how it works. Um, you know, if you want easy, there has to be uniformity. And, and so that's how they do it. But what I really like about this, and the reason I'm, again, looking at this is, again, just like the JG Aurora, I'm looking for printers that, you know, work good for Joe Average Novice Startup that work well in a business setting because really that's what this channel is about is really you know the digital cottage industry and and um, you know I've corresponded with Dr. Dave a long time viewer of this channel and, and I really want to work getting back to some of those roots of uh, the purpose of this channel is to help you guys start digital cottage businesses and whether it's 3D printing, CNC, laser cutting it's producing something whether in an Etsy format, an eBay format, etc. I have other side businesses where I 3D print and create stuff and sell them on eBay and Etsy. And, and this is what it's about. And this is how I do it. That's why I kind of share these printers. And I'm looking for different technology that allows me to create that home business. And so and that's what I want to share with you guys is that ability. I don't really care about low poly Pikachus and that kind of stuff. I'm looking at how does one educate and make money with these types of devices. And that's why I pick the devices I do. So just so you guys know. Now, the other piece with this one that I really liked is, again, if I flip it over, look at the extruder. The, or, yeah, the extruder here. It's fully covered, so you have the little lever down here to pull to insert the filament. Um, I think it probably does have an auto load or, or quote unquote auto load sequence. It just feeds the filament through um, at a higher rate to feed the Bowden tube. Uh, but and I believe I got to check, don't quote me on this. I think there's a filament out sensor because this does have loss of power resume, like the JG Aurora, which I think is important. Because also, my understanding is it will, on a filament break or filament run out, uh, stop this and allow you to restart. So I, I, I need to clarify some of those pieces. The instructions are a little bit vague. But again, that's why I'm doing these videos is to really document what this thing, these things do and don't do. So, but what's important about this you can't get your finger in this this is great for schools or business now because one of the things again if you just have a home business you know from a liability standpoint your kid sticks your finger in it I mean it's going to be up to you to pay the hospital bill to get their finger out but if you're if you have a school you want to do this in an educational type setting you want to do this in an office setting small business prototyping you're going to have liability issues if somebody sticks their finger in, in the extruder. Now you say, well, you know, Joe, you know, they, they should know coffee's hot, right? Well, it doesn't work like that. McDonald's paid big, big fines and has paid multiple big, big fines over hot coffee just because people should know it's hot, right? So you need to have these things in mind. Also, the hot end is self-contained, too. It's protected. And again, you know, you don't have or at least the, the concerns are minimized or should be about hot end damage. Because again, let's take this hot end out and let's talk about it a little bit more. Uh, because I really liked it now. Again, this is the first I've got my hands on it. I've looked at it online. I've did some research and homework on this before agreeing to everything. But you can see the sensors here, uh, the connectors. So again, this plugs in, the filament runs through here, power is provided here. And the way it looks, and again, I have to confirm all this. I'm just making some assumptions here and kind of vlogging with you guys. Since there's four connectors, I'm going to make the assumption that um, maybe there are two power or there's some kind of sensors here. You know, one for a thermistor for temperature and then maybe two for heat or is the heat unit up in here? I don't know. I have to take it all apart and I'll take pictures and I'll do just like the, the JG Aurora. And, and that's one of the nice parts about... Um, you know getting in printers from GearBest so you know they do provide them for my review there's no stipulation on what I have to say or don't have to say etc it's just whatever I think and because you know I don't I don't pay for them I get them from GearBest I'm very okay with taking them apart because you know this is a 200 some dollar printer I'm really not overly concerned if I'm gonna break it because I've gotten it in so this is this is the advantage a lot of people you know oh, gear best this and that I, I think this is actually good what they do is giving these out to the community to take them apart to try them out to show them to you guys um, 
again, with my relationship with these guys, and, and I would not do it if it was anything stipulated I had to say something, you're seeing the raw product here. But this is kind of the nice piece about this whole thing is to see how this works. If you don't like it, that's great too. But um, I think this is really going to be interesting for those uh, educational schools, offices, Joe Average, because I tell you what, I remember the first time I had to clean a nozzle, I'm like, what? Yeah, you, you gotta, you know, heat it up to, you know, 200 degrees C and take a wrench and take this off while it's hot. And, you know, naturally, first couple times you burn your fingers and it's not an enjoyable experience. And that's probably about the third highest question I get on this channel is how to clean nozzles. And so this is why when I looked at this, I decided this was a good printer to take a look because, again, this is a plastic housing and it appears to be thermally insulated from the nozzle itself. And so it pops in there. Now, I have to go through and, you know, how do you change all this stuff and make it work? Uh, the other part I think I forgot to mention is it does come with a wall wart very much like the Monoprice Mini. And it's about the same size as the Monoprice Mini. I do like, let me flip this over. It's got a good sized, looks like about a 50 millimeter or so uh, cooling fan in the base of it. And as I've mentioned already, it's got, um, you know, the touch screen. Now let's kind of flip this up. So it does have the one arm very much like the uh, Mono Price Mini. Now the other piece is this arm, this gantry, is protected with the belt. I can't stick my fingers in there. Safety, safety, safety. I really, really like that. Um, that I can't get my fingers in here. And the same thing with this. Now I can stick my fingers inside here, but I really have to, you know, intentionally do that to get my fingers in there. Um, and, and the mechanics are actually more so down here than they are up here because the gantry rises. So again, uh, you know, a rather appearingly safe machine. I'm going to qualify it with that. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is, again, they said it's 130 by 130 build. Well, the bed is almost 200 millimeters, um, actually about 220 millimeters long by, um, you know, about 140 wide so I'm not sure why they're saying 130 by 130 if that's something in error because they're saying about 130 high and um, it looks like the gantry would go up to about 170 so 130 high would make sense um, you know all in all the footprint of this guy is about you know 280 or about 11 inches uh, wide and it's about 170 or a little short of about six and a half inches deep and then height wise uh, sorry for bumping yeah we're looking at about 320 in millimeters and a little over a foot um, in imperial high so it does have the Bowden tube assembly uh, which is pretty cool and this is basically what you get out of the box for the E180 now I'm going to be doing some uh, test prints and just kind of set up stuff and all that uh, as far as setting it up, there's really not much to set up other than putting in some screws for um, uh, four screws for the filament stand. So I'm not going to worry about doing a video on how to build a filament stand. Um, but I am going to do, once I get this set up and test it a little bit, um, do a video on kind of how it works in general. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a shootout with the Monoprice Select Mini. Yes, just like we did with the JG Aurora and the CR10, we're going to do a shootout with this guy and see how it goes. Um, now it does have the blue tape now it comes with this uh, overlap blue tape here but it comes with a sheet of blue tape that's apparently been cut down that one can put on here that's smaller and i'm even wondering if this is intended to be the print size area and this is you know what uh even 190 in itself so we'll see how this compares to the modern price mini but i i think again you know, um, the advantages are the safety aspects of the contained hot end, the contained gantry assembly, the contained extruder. Uh, it does have the power loss, or at least it says in the manual it has the power loss. It's got the color touch screen, no knob, so you touch it. And the other thing is, I forgot to mention at the onset, is this is supposed to be a cloud-based printer. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing in my day job. I design all kinds of things for the cloud. I'm a cloud guy, so I'm sort of into that kind of thing. So we'll see how it works with the 3D printer. Um, and we'll show you how all those things work. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting with the... Um, the uh, G Tech, three E's. It sounds rather interesting. G Tech. 
uh, E180. But anyways, thanks to GearBest for providing this. I'll have links down below if you want to pick one up from GearBest. Um, and uh, don't don't forget the swag shop up there. Yep, it's right up there. And uh, let me know in the comments below. Do you have one? Are you interested in one? What do you think is good? What do you think is bad? Always interested in constructive opinions. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.